Hello. We're all part of a wheel of spirituality. Our souls are reincarnated time and time again until we achieve an absolute purity. The philosophy we're talking about tonight rests in an esoteric place where Jewishness meets meditation and mysticism. Some say it's the building block for modern Judaism. Tonight, the Kabbalah. My name is Ariel Klein, I'm a spiritual healer and I run courses in meditation and Kabbalah at the London School of Mind, Body and Spirit. I'm Larry Tabak of Shir Chaim, the Hampstead Reformed Jewish Community. Hi, my name is Mike Levy and I believe that Kabbalah can help you balance your life in a more positive form. Hi, I'm Ruth Sayada. I study Kabbalah and it's given me hope and belief in my religion. Hi, my name is Eliyahu Yardeni. I'm a representative of the Kabbalah Learning Center and Rabbi Berg in France and uh, also here in London. Hi, I'm Stanley Miller of Manchester. The Kabbalah has helped strengthen my belief and the creator of the universe. Perhaps I can start with, with you, Rabbi. Um, so so what are, what are, what's the distinction between Judaism? I, I mean, I'm, I'm, as, I, as a Jew myself, I, I've, I've not come across the Kabbalah. I think this is often the case. Um, many people come to, uh, come to synagogues and, and never hear, even hear the word. Um, Many of our rabbinic colleagues never use the word and are not uh, themselves involved in it. Um, some people are satisfied with that. What they find is, is enough for them. I have a friend who, uh, f who said to me one day that synagogues were the least spiritual places she could imagine. And uh, I felt that it's perhaps because we're not, we as rabbis, I, I speak for myself, are not actually pointing people in, you know, enough into those uh, spiritual recesses that that exist in Judaism. We're presenting it uh, too much as a as a series of external things that Jews do, and uh, perhaps not enough as a um, not revealing enough of the depths of what those things relate to in oneself and and uh, hopefully in God. Because yeah. it, 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 I mean, you're absolutely right. Because I I don't think of Judaism as a spiritual religion. I think of it as quite a pragmatic religion. Well, well, I think of it as a, as a lot of people shouting at each other, basically. <laughs> um, so, which again isn't a very spiritual thing. So, so, but but it's but it's a it's a building block. It's where you, you think it's where Judaism came from. Hmm. Hmm? So sorry. Yeah. No, like, uh, so, repeat that question again. I'm sorry. So is, is it is it where is is the is is it where Judaism sprung from? Is it the fountain of Judaism? The, the Kabbalah, Kabbalah. Uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And did, 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 is, is that but generally agreed? My my personal opinion, or my or my personal studies, is that the Kabbalah existed before creation, before time, was it like that? And with the Kabbalah, everything came into creation. Um, but as you said, it is the Judaism is the building blocks mm -hmm. leading up. It, it's it is a ladder. It, it's it's every rung of the uh, um, rungs of a, of a ladder, and um, it's like everything else. The the actual before you can actually go on go and study the Kabbalah is to start with the first of all, is the first of the 613 laws. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, of course, the Ten Commandments, as I was advised many years ago. Mm. So how does it differ from, from ordinary Judaism? Is it a more ritualistic? It's, it's, well, it's more... Ritualistic? Yeah. 
There's no ritual to it. No ritual at all. No. Mm -hmm. It's the significance behind the ritual, or it's the, the spiritual level behind the practical. Mm. I still don't, and, and, and I apologise for my, for, my, um, for my stupidity, but I still don't quite understand how the Kabbalah, how the Kabbalah differs from Judaism. I mean, what, what do you do that non-Kabbalist Jews don't do? You mean what Jews do? Yeah, well, no, what do you no, do? What, what, are, what, are, what are the followers of the Kabbalah do? I think one of the problems is the word do. It's not so much a doing, it's more a way of being. It's a, it's a level of awareness that you then bring into everyday matters, be it prayers in the morning, um, be it going shopping, whatever it may be. It's just, the word means to receive. And the more we receive, the more we can then radiate. And if you believe in God, then you can consider us as a cup and God will fill us up to the maximum at all times. Some people, um, if you like, may have a bit of um, dross, you could call it, lining the inside of the cup, like arteries, and the cup then can contain less light. Meditation, bringing in a Kabbalistic way of thinking into daily life will help to broaden the capacity that we can hold. Yeah. The, the cup gets bigger. And the more that happens, the more we start to acknowledge things differently. It's a way of seeing the world rather than a way of doing things in the world. The Tsar gives an example. The Tsar is the Book of Splendor. It's what most of modern-day Kabbalah is based upon now, the teachings. Saying a prayer or um, doing a mitzvah, a precept, without the awareness, the spiritual awareness of why, it's like giving someone something behind your back, asking them to take it. But with the level of awareness, it's, here you are, happy birthday, John. Um, it's giving me a lot of pleasure to give this to you. It's that kind of difference. And you can imagine that receiving something that someone doesn't really know what they're doing, it's very different. Mm. Um, and it all ties into what the first question you were saying is, which is about how can, how can it be applied practically? Everyone knows intellectually that smoking is bad for your health, but millions and millions of people continue to smoke. The difference of understanding Kabbalah intellectually and bringing it in into an everyday way into your life is suddenly, you, as a smoker, as soon as that knowledge is integrated and more whole, you are an ex-smoker. You just wouldn't do that to yourself anymore if you knew not just, if you like, the correlation that science has shown between smoking and, and illnesses. You'd suddenly want to be healthy. Mm. Now, it has to become real and personal for you. At that, at that moment, otherwise it's nothing. A friend of mine says, uh, awareness just means you know you're being an idiot. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to stop being an idiot, because um, the, the awareness doesn't automatically mean you're going to stop no, I appreciate smoking. It. Um, the, 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 the scientific information has to become personal. And the same thing, I think, is true with, with Kabbalah. But I, I wonder if I'm, if I'm perhaps on a slightly different wavelength from, from some of the rest of you. Um, for me, for me, Kabbalah is not the path or the truth, or it, it is a path and a truth within Judaism. And there, there are other mystical paths uh, within Judaism, um, and I find that I view them um, rather as tools. And that, just as you wouldn't use a screwdriver to bang in a nail, um, there are times when I find that um, um, uh, Kabbalistic terminology in the in the stricter sense is very useful and other times when I find that um, that the concepts are getting in the way of my um, simply allowing my cup to be filled to use your metaphor Ariel um, so um, I tend to be a little bit eclectic in in Jewish mysticism um, perhaps it's heretical for me to suggest that uh, yes there, there are some very beautiful parts of the Zohar there are other parts of the Zohar that I can't relate to. The real issue for me when I look at a text of the Zohar or other, other texts of other, of other schools of Jewish mysticism is um, what's, I mean it may sound a bit crass, but what's in it for me spiritually? What spiritual lesson is there here that, that is going to um, uh, broaden my understanding of my life uh, and of the life that I you know that I am around, uh, that, that that I'm passing through, if you like, that the uh, the, the the physical journey that my spirit is taking.
I think I'm a bit worried about being caught up in a system. Kabbalah is not a system, I think. It's a, uh, it's a path. Um, it's, um, for me, it's a tool. Uh, sometimes it's, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a way that hopefully will get you forward, but you have to start from where you are. Yeah, you have to start at the bottom rung of the ladder. Yeah. But when I was involved, or rather with my a late friend of mine, Jaime Small, that is there, so rest in peace, Chaim, by his Hebrew name, I used to call him. Uh, going back to 1971, 72, I think it was. And he's, he, when, he, he and I, over the decades, had such a rapport in so many things on mysticism on, and the occult also. That I've been a student of, I, or I still am a student of many things, philosophy, theosophy, theology, and blah, 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 etc. What sort of things did, did you and Jaime agree on? Uh, Specifics is what I'm grappling with. Well, uh, he was going through a bad patch uh, in his personal life around that area. And he was also looking for answers. And that's when I was, I was so naive, didn't know, never even know the, heard of the word Kabbalah. And anyway, in conversation, when he was telling me, so I says, Chaim, Chaim, I says, what, 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 what is it? What, do, what does it mean? So I may be, but I may, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, letting the cat out of the bag. He says, well, it's searching for the name of God. I said, well, I said, well, I don't, I still don't understand. He says, well, with using the name of God, many miracles can happen. So I says, oh, I says, I don't like the sound of this. Was he uh, talking about literal miracles happening? No, the miracles. Right. Mm. So anyway, I interrupted. So you said yes, uh, because we did something one night. I shall never forget what all the things are, but I think of what he involved me in. <coughs> oh yeah, I've no regrets because I've gained a lot. But I recall at the time, um, in the middle of the night, saying certain prayers with him and the phone rang at four o'clock in the morning it was meant to it, it was meant to ring and a cold shudder went down my back because the person that rang the phone at four o'clock in the morning he'd not spoke to for at least six months and what did you pray for him to phone well we said his certain prayers uh, in Hebrew uh, um, as I said, the phone rang, and I, I, I just didn't know. I was gobsmacked. I, I just, I, I can't, I can't put it into words. But as I said, I, I, I'll, I will never forget that day to, to the to the day I die. I'll take that with mm. me to my grave, in the sense of the word. Yeah. And after that, well. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> but as, feel, feel free to tell the other story but, of what happened after that. Oh no, but as but as Jaime used to say, and for other reasons, I hope you're still up there listening to me, Chaim. Um, well, I always call him by his Hebrew name. Um, Life. Yeah, Chaim. So, as he always used to say, we, we spent hours upon hours talking and talking and talking and talking and talking, etc. And as he always used to say, there are no such things as coincidences and there are no such things as accidents. In other words, it is all fated. And being a student of Kabbalah, uh, as the Kabbalists put it, everything is fated. And I believe in that. Everything occurs for a reason. Yes.
It's I've got to ask this because this has been this has been nagging me. Um, we, in, in a few programs in this series, we've had people who who believe in fate and believe in karma. And on each occasion, I said to them, um, "Well, I could give you, excuse uh, me, interrupted, but I think I could give you an answer that answers nothing. Give it anyway. What answers everything? Mm -hmm. What's the answer? I once wrote a, well, I've written many letters in the past on various subjects uh, to dare I mention the name of the paper <laughs> of the Jewish Telegraph in Manchester, right?" Um, <laughs> they no once prayed for my soul, I should just interject. No, no, no <laughs> doubt so, this will be edited, I don't know. No, anyway, no, no, go ahead. So. And in relationship to the Holocaust, I mean, that's another subject to go into. Anyway, it goes back, the answer goes back to the Book of Job. Right. And in the Book of Job, it's, it says, as Satan says, to the boss, as I affectionately call him. I always, I, know, I never use the name if I can help it. I always just call him the boss. Because ultimately, he is the boss of everything. So, as he said, a Satan says, Ah, see, Job is a good man, an righteous man, a pious man, a religious man. But take away everything and see how he behaves. So God says, no, I'll give you permission. You can do with Job whatever you want, except take away his life. And this ultimately he does. Sadly, his wife passes his way, his children passes his way, his wealth is taken away, his warehouses are burnt down, blah, blah, blah. And Job is reduced to nothing as it says, sackcloth and ashes. Everybody's heard more or less this story, but perhaps not in the context. So, at the end of it, he's, he's still he has faith in the boss. He still blesses the Almighty. But he's still worried, thinking, to, well, why has all this happened? I'm covered in boils and everything else. And then worse is to come. His comfort has come, Job. Uh, Job's comfort has come. Ah, search your mind, your deeds, for what you may have done 20 years ago. Now you're getting punished. No, 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 never. I've not sinned. I've not sinned all my life. I've been a good, upright man. Done nothing wrong whatsoever. And he does. He does. Uh, okay, he does think. He says, no, 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 no. I've done this. I've done that. That's right. So ultimately, then, it comes to the end. And uh, according to the quotation, God, uh, Job actually rises from, from toe to the heavens and says, why, God, why have you done this to me? Job gets his answer out of a roaring storm. And the boss says, Job, who are you to call me to account for what I do? Where were you? when I was laying down the foundations of the universe. Where were you when the morning star twinkled? Who are you, again, to call me to account? How can you comprehend all the things I do? Nobody can. That is an answer that answers nothing, what well, answers everything ultimately. And I take that in its context. But if you still try and analyse it, it's quite simple. Is this, that we are what we are, mere mortals. We're here, we're here, we are on this planet a short time, right? 
but we haven't got that intelligence to figure that out. And that is why the boss is the boss, and I am Stanley. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I think we're just getting away from the subject a little right. bit. Right. Well, let, 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 let me just finish okay. up, because this is, in, right, this is in relationship to Joe. Okay. Right. So, when, so, when he's ready to um, create man, and the angels say, no, don't do it. Look what's going to happen. War, famine, killing this and that. Look what he's, he's going to pollute the planet. He's going to do this, he's going to do that, he's going to do the other. Don't do it. But as it says, but God looked ahead. He, f he could foresee what they couldn't. In other words, he says, no, we will make man. Because ultimately, in part of the Kabbalah, man can finish off what he started. I think if I've got that correct. I mean, I've got forgot the zig. So what I'm saying is this, that when, again in Job, when he says, um, like, you know, uh, you can't comprehend what I do. I do everything for the reason. Also, even the angels couldn't comprehend what he did. So he also created man. Mm. I think it's time we should we should open this out to, to, to the whole group. Is everyone in yeah, broad yeah. agreement with, with what Stanley was saying? Not to the extent of um the details were we're not alone god is connected to us all we're not alone in this world the way he put it over is though god's there and we're here that's not true the story you told about the the praying followed by the telephone call i think most most maybe most jews and tell me if i'm wrong maybe most jews who who haven't studied the kabbalah will say Whereas Jews who have studied the Kabbalah will say, yes, that's, that's, that can happen. Is that, is that right? The Kabbalah is like, um, it's the wisdom, the teaching the person, teaching the human being, how he can realize himself, how he can use with his potential, tremendous potential. And it's to do with the, with the, the laws of this universe. It's the reality. It's like uh, science. There are a lot of people, non-religious people, who are true Kabbalists. Uh, Stephen Hawkins. He's one of the greatest physicists. It's quantum physics. And the guy lives in a wheelchair and he uses a voice synthesizer to speak. And yet, he talks about the universes. And listening to him, you're listening to a true Kabbalist. Does he know he's a Kabbalist? No, I don't know whether he does or not. He wants to find the answer to everything. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> you know, the quantum physics. Well, mm -hmm. like, there so are there are lots of Kabbalists about who don't know they're Kabbalists? The Kabbalah, like, which was written a long time ago, echoes what the quantum physics teach us about the creation of the universe. They're finding out now, through the quantum physics, how the universe was formed. But there's, there's messages in the Kabbalah which teach you that years ago, mankind hasn't changed. Human thought over thousands of years really hasn't changed. We've evolved a little bit more and become a little bit more intelligent. Excuse me. You seem a bit aggressive. You seem a little uncomfortable. Uh, these, 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 these comparisons between Kabbalah and, and modern physics, which, which are starting to be the rage. There was an article on it in the, in the dare I say, the new scientist uh, a few months back. They, they troubled me a lot. I, I looked at the article there and, and I, don't, I couldn't judge whether the science was good or not because I'm not a scientist, but the Kabbalah looked pretty ropey. Um, the, the, um, I'm a bit worried because science is a continuously evolving uh, enterprise. Okay. And uh, Stephen Hawkins, who's great, and, and, I, and I think I understand a bit of his book, um, says, uh, may say one thing now, and, and that may be, that may be um, the point at which s um, physics has arrived at, at, at the time he wrote that book. Uh, in 50, 100 years from now, mo modern physics could be quite different. Now, it may be that it will still 
uh, connect up with some of the Kabbalistic stuff. It may not, and I, I'm a bit worried about tying tying those two together. No, we're not. We're, 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 and we're, saying that, really you know, that they're the same thing. Right. No, only in its essence, not in its actual form. So you said in, in its essence, mm. as it comes over as a human being, in its essence, not in the actual structure of what he was talking about. I mean, that encompasses it. But, but like you say, it, science changes. It, it's a, I would like to say something related to uh, what he was saying. Because uh, Einstein revealed the relativity, and we know that Einstein uh, revealed that it's possible also to go through the door without the key. I mean, through the theory. Space but time. he couldn't can, do it. If I? Einstein, excuse me, Einstein will, will, uh, will forget his key, I'm sure, that he, if he couldn't come in through the door. I mean, he didn't know how to go to this dimension. And what I want to say by that is that, that uh, if there is no practical manifestation, of what is really Kabbalah, it's not, it's not teaching, it's not touching the Kabbalah. I, it's I, think, way, I think they're, they're all missing the yeah, point, so actually. Yeah, so I think they're right. going really sky high with this scientific approach. Really, first of all, you have to be Jewish. Second of all, what we're trying to do while we're here on limited time in this, I mean, I might have another 20 years, who knows, but I might be reincarnated again, who knows, I won't know, I won't remember anything. But while I'm here, what I'm trying to do is try and be a good person, try to be good to other people, and do as many what we call mitzvot as possible to help other people, to give charity, to be a practicing Jew, and to learn, to find reasons for everything. Um, you, 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 you can all start from today. I mean, nobody has to kind of learn um, everything about Judaism first. But you've got to be a Jew. Uh, what, uh, well, you be I a don't convert to you. No, you haven't got to be. I, th I think, I, I personally that. think that <laughs> it was meant to be for Jewish people to learn. Other people learning fine. I mean, I'm not saying that we're the chosen people and we're the only ones, you know, that are going to have everything given to us once we get to the next life. Everybody can, has the possibility and potential to be good. We can all follow a good life or we can choose to follow a bad mm. life and choose evil. Whatever we do as human beings will eventually, uh, as we get to the next world, we'll, we'll be judged. And whether we come back and try and perfect it again or not, who knows? I don't know if I'm going to come back. We don't know. We're not supposed to know. But I do know that while I'm here, what I'm trying to do is be a good Jew. I'm trying to learn as much as possible about my life, about being a Jew, and to give it more um, feeling and, and to give me more reason, more hope, more faith. Then this is just taking that one step further. Um, everybody has choices. We've got freedom of choice. I do believe in divine providence. Things are mapped out for you. Um, how I met my husband, for example. Um, I had a car crash. I was supposed to go to Israel, and I couldn't go, and I had to wait a year. Now, you, perhaps people would say it was just coincidence that the next year I went to Israel and I met him. Well, I'm saying, well, maybe I was meant to have a car crash that so I wouldn't go that year, and the next year I would go and meet him. I do believe that things are mapped out for you from birth. I do believe we all have a soul, not just Jewish people. Everybody has a soul. Everybody has the potential to be good. Everybody has the potential to go to heaven. And, you know, I know people find it very hard to understand and believe, but we are reincarnated. And we are, while we're here, try, as Jewish people, we have a harder task. We're supposed to complete 613 um, commandments, whereas um, non-Jewish people only have the seven. Uh, sorry, the Ten Commandments, and, and seven mm. lower seven yeah, lower and that's right. But surely nobody so really expects us to. We're, we're really expected, expected to do a lot more. Does anyone more. here know all six hundred and thirteen? The good news is that most of them no, no longer apply because there's no temple. But most of the teaching of Kabbalah is based on really how to create union, how to really arrive, trying to feel the other person, to feel the necessary, the, the, what the other person need, how to arrive to share and to receive, because when we share, we receive, and all of the subject that we can develop. So this is like, um, I think that's, it's to do with practicing, because, li but practicing in this sense, that the person uh, learning how to go out for himself, how to be happier, because if he's not, he cannot teach, and mm -hmm. he cannot, he cannot, uh, help other people because he cannot help himself etc if you want to find the essence of how it can be helpful to humanity yeah. how the whole of humanity can gain then you have to take things into a different context i'd like to point something out mm -hmm. a, a proper cabalist 
proper the Cabalis will not lift that from there to there on the Sabbath. Until you do That's that. That's a religious person. No, 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 sorry. no, no, no. I'm sorry. No, this, no. Is, this is a, this is no, a, a travesty no, of no. traditional <laughs> Judaism. No, no. Me. To lift that from there to there, right, on the Sabbath, that constitutes work. You're talking there. about an orthodox and a, person. And a true no, Kabbalist will not do that. You don't mean, you mean a, a, a true orthodox person? Uh, who's, I'm talking, who I'm talking about we a to true judge? Kabbalist. Well, that's another we label. You got no, I'm, I'm, true. I'm sorry, this is, this is, this is troubling me. Um, this is troubling me because I mean, look, traditionally in, in Kabbalistic literature, the, the traditional Jewish rituals and services are a pathway to the kind of understanding that, that, uh, of oneself and the universe that uh, Mike and Ariel, you've been referring to. Um, I think, uh, uh, granted that there may be other ways of doing it, and, and, and I, I accept that, but um, the traditional path, I think, always was through those, tra those traditional practices. And yes, those prayers that we have in, those, in all those services are uh, designed as meditations. In fact, I, I, I actually um, have shared with some, some people the thought that, it, that the services are a kind of guided meditation. Um, um, you know, that the, that the morning service takes you through the mm -hmm. levels of, of, of the self, uh, through the physical and the emotional and whatever. But you also need to um, focus on on the actual words that you're saying, and one of the problems with scripted prayer is that, of course, it's always the same, and therefore it gets boring, and it, you have to keep re, re almost reinventing it for yourself uh, each time you, you open that book, and that's a an very important pathway, which which um, uh, I think I think a lot of people. Who perhaps are in the in, in more traditional um, modes of Jewish life, not necessarily the Orthodox people. I mean, the Reform people have just as, have, uh, are also capable of saying the prayers without paying attention to them. Um, it's uh, but it seems that we can. I mean, one of the things that I, th I see myself trying to do in my work is to help people see what the services really are that they come to week after week or once a year or whatever it is. That they're not just words to say and then and to remind oneself why one didn't come to shul uh, since the last time. They're actually um, a pathway to God and self-realization. And this is, this is becoming an important focus well, for me. Well, Larry, Larry, that on the six, under the 613 laws, yeah. the Shulchan Aruch, the yeah. Kitzah Shulchan Aruch, yeah. right. What's, what's and, that? That is the 613 laws. Transl to translate that into English, the Kitsa Shulchan Aruch means the prepared table. Uh, will yeah, you go sure. along? Yeah, right, yeah. right. Now that means to say that the table has been prepared for you by going, doing the 613 uh, well, not commandments. Doing as many of them are. Um, well, doing as many of those are applicable. No, 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 no. But it's, as, it, as it is issued, is that, what was it? Um, 100 is for each day of the week, and the 13 are for the Sabbath, right? For Shabbat, right? The 613, yeah. right? Plus, obviously, the Ten Commandments. But um, in that way. So the thing is this. When I started with the Kabbalah, right, let, let, and I, um, when, when Jaime said that to me, and I said, I don't want to get involved, right, I'm not, I'm not, uh, his relationship, because what Ariel said earlier on about your father saying, leave the Kabbalah alone, taboo, mm -hmm. is right, and I would not recommend anybody to get involved in it. Certainly not the um, the practical side of it. Not not the stories what I've read about it anyway. Um, and, and, so good and yet you're here. The, 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 that seems talking, <laughs> talking in front of the cameras. <laughs> Sorry. You're here talking in front of the cameras. Perhaps yeah. that's his sharing, message. Sharing, sharing, okay, maybe that's, maybe that's the message. Well, we, I, I, I certainly didn't think I was happy. You want people <laughs> to be relaxed. 
to not have any more fears or anxieties in their lives. You don't want people to be free-minded. You don't want them to be happy in their no, lives. Because That's it, all Kabbalah is. No, That's all no, it is. It's, it's, it's an essence of life. It's it's not, it's not, it's not. It's not. It goes you're, much deeper than that. <laughs> no, much, it, much only deeper. human condition goes deeper than no, that. Once no, you renounce no. evil, no. once you <laughs> embrace death, what can I, you I've been, I was, I've been studying it from 1971 okay. to the present. Okay. Right. Right. And what they say, sometimes you can't teach an old dog new tricks. But, and it's true what King Solomon said, the wisest man who ever lived, and there won't be another man to have his wisdom. And he also was involved in the Kabbalah, as many others. And as he says, if a man to be, lived to be a thousand years of age, he still wouldn't learn enough. Of course not. And he's right. Oh, no question. Yeah. But, but you did with that. No, no question about that. We, we, you don't... A, a human being will not scratch the surface, no matter how learned, how wise, what a sage, you do not scratch the surface in our lifetime. Yeah, what well, all you can do is know the reason why you exist. Once you know that you're here for enjoyment, you have to no, enjoy no, 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 no. your yes, existence. Yes, a certain amount, but I... Not a certain amount. We have... We, you haven't got a second to spare. We, as human beings, <laughs> have a mission in this life, as you say. Yes. To serve the Creator. But that is serving the Creator, that's why right. you were created. There's no difference between evolution or creative. It's the same guys. Be because there's, there's but nature. We, we, who is nature? We are. We are part. We are all part of God. You have to believe no. that you're part of God. No. Nature, you don't. You don't believe. Do you nature, believe? Nature. 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 The sun, the moon, the stars, etc. We're part of all the that. The wind, the earth, the five elements. Yes. Are all servants of the boss. It's all connected. Right. We're all connected right. as one. We've all come from the. You have all come from the same but, place. But where, where as human beings, where we are, each one is Michael. No, you, you, in your you, mind. Michael, Michael. I'm not Michael. Michael. It's a label that was put on me at birth. I'm, are, I'm not Michael. You are an, <laughs> an entity unto yourself. You recognize. Stanley, I am an entity. You're recognized by other human beings. Yeah, the tree doesn't know me as Michael. Layers, the thing yeah. is, the mm -hmm. thing is this: that you should live to be 120 years of age, right? But when the time comes, there will never be another Michael. When my time comes, there will never be another Yes, we're all unique in our own form. That's right. <laughs> but that anyway. doesn't mean to say that you have to go along a conditioned life. <laughs>
and you have to become part of the big picture. The big picture is the cosmos, the universe, where we've come from, which is part of being part of God. But why now? Why, why, why the sudden Oh, this is interest? a good question. Why now well, in this why? generation? Because, mm. because uh, that's... Well, I'll put it like this. I think the rabbis are failing everybody. That's why. No, because we're <laughs> living in a... No, we're, we're living in a high-tech... Surely not these rabbis. Sorry? Not, not these rabbis. <laughs> no, no, no. Rabbis in the plural. No, I, I suspect you're probably right about that, actually. But, uh, but uh, I wanted to pick up... I, I mean, I, I have a very different view about this Hollywood Kabbalah phenomenon. I think it's just the flavor I would, of the month, I would, I would, and, I, and I think next month uh, or next year it could be a different flavor. Not really. Uh, not it's necessarily. been other flavors. Yeah. Maybe. I've always felt that, um, that that there is a universal truth out there that, that perhaps we can, for the sake of a label called spiritual or mystical or whatever, but that every, every um, tradition or, or culture will express that in its own particular language. And from where I sit, Kabbalah is, is actually one of a number of languages that Judaism has developed for talking about, um, about the, the, the ultimate reality, the ultimate truths. Um, and I find that, um, that occasionally I can be um, inspired at least as much by, by uh, some other religious traditions or other, other Jewish tradi religious, uh, spiritual traditions, um, because they also seem to be pointing to that same ultimate truth. Right. And I think, I think um, a lot of the problems that, um, um, well, part of my problem with many of the Kabbalistic texts is that they're texts, and the best they can do is point us onwards uh, if we're attuned to hearing, you know, the message that they've got, and I think that's probably also true of our of our religious teachers. Um, the best they can do is point us onwards, because that ultimate truth is probably something that um, couldn't be expressed in 25 words or less <laughs> while you stand on one leg. The, it's there's something. An example we can look at if we personal. actually get in, into some of the Kabbalistic stuff. The the Hebrew word for truth is emet. It's made up of three letters. The first letter is Aleph, the b first letter of the alphabet. Mem, the middle letter, is more or less the middle letter of the alphabet. And Tuf is the final letter of the alphabet. So by Hebrew or Kabbalistic definition, Judaic definition, truth is all-embracing. You can't have anything and call it true if you place parameters around it. It's beyond that. As soon as you remove one of those um, opening parameters, if you like, the, the parameters that are, are not parameters, you take off the letter Aleph, for example, you're left with Met, means death. As soon as you leave something out of this universal truth, what's divine in nature, it's something that we can only use our perceptions for, and those perceptions by definition are again human. It's not something that we can speak about or understand. It, it, the whole discussion here is just a way, as the rabbi is saying, to point us perhaps forward to facilitate an understanding that we're never going to achieve as such. But again, so fruitless. What's fruitless? No, 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 no not at all. What's totally. Fruitless? Well, you no. spoke of never <laughs> being able to achieve <laughs> it. I was, I would have... No, I, I agree it, you can't achieve it, but it's not fruitless. It's, no. it so the, the never, journey uh, is uh, enough. It, uh, it's the, the never, way to, maybe to, maybe another way to say it, uh, just to say that uh, the, the truth is something that is like uh, always of emotion, it's like it's changing always. Every second now, the truth is something. Tomorrow, it will be something else because it's, practically it will be something else. And this is really something that you can never say that I have the truth because to truth, truth means life. There's, th there's, ja there's, three si there's three sides to a story, a debate, or an argument. Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith, and the truth. Always remember that. But it's the truth is stable. Well, well, yeah, we change. <laughs> Basically, what it is. Yeah, I think yeah. the truth is stable. The it's we who is change. Eternal. It's well, we who. Yeah, those three letters. We can, we can I, was think, I was thinking yes. as you were as I you were describing. The truth that we are getting. Mm -hmm. well, but nobody's nobody's mentioned about the dangers about the Kabbalah, have they? Well, it depends what you're doing. What, what are you, the dangers? What are you actually doing? <laughs> The, the ah. dangers depend. If you go, the, the texts that are available that describe some of the most powerful meditations that have been done by some Absolutely. of the most capable and, if you like, experienced Kabbalists. Like what? Give me examples. 
I'll, I'll mention a book, but I'm not going to give an example. In a book by Arie Kaplan called Meditation and the Kabbalah, there are meditations there that I wouldn't want to do myself. I would certainly not recommend people mm -hmm. to do because it's important to look at it energetically. If why we're talking you, about... I'd live, sorry, I'll come to it. Why won't you give the examples, though? I well, I, to, to describe it is too complex. Um, they're meditations on divine names, that, for, as an example, and different permutations. If you have ABC, you can rearrange it in six different ways. Um, similarly, if you have a name of God and you permute the letters, then if you know how to meditate in that way, it will be too dangerous for some people because energetically they're not going to be strong enough. The cup is not going to be strong enough to contain well, that force. Well, it could force. actually kill them. It's difficult to well, get into specifics of killing or not killing, but it could do more harm than good. And, and that is why people have described it, it as dangerous. That is why There's lots there of things are in life examples. that can drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. but it depends how is, deep you want to go into something. This you know, is the role of the rabbi or the teacher, the facilitator, someone who can guide a pupil well, along that path. The basic thing is not to go to extremes on anything. Mm -hmm. Keep things on a simplistic balance in life. Don't go to extremes. There's no need for it. You're not here long enough to take yourself onto journeys to drive yourself crazy. You're here to find your balance, keep yourself cool and calm, and enjoy your existence. That's all you're here for. You must go back to those roots. That's all you're here for. Well, it's human beings are here for. It's difficult for us to say what everyone else is here for. Well, why else would you want to exist? What other reason would there be to exist but not to enjoy your existence while you're here? If you're only here mm. for 80 or 90 years or whatever your given time mm. is, why else would you exist? So the Kabbalah can just ask this, so the Kabbalah can even can even cure the ills within the within the Jewish community. If you allow it to. Mm. Only if you allow it to. Mm. In the Jewish community, it's, it's like an it's, it's splintered. There is certain I think that one of the most important messages that uh, I think for me the Kabbalah have to give to the world because the label it's not important. And it's not important also it's not important you have to you don't have to work for the Kabbalah. I mean I think that you have to work for it to to really practical, practically helping, changing things. So I think that uh, uh, in this in this case there is a lot what to do in in, the, in in really awaking this spiritual part of herself. And this is very very important. That I'm sure that it is related. When I'm talking about Holocaust, it's not possible to explain now because it's a very sensitive subject. But I know people in Israel, they went through the Holocaust. Usually there is no way to. Uh, cure, uh, I mean, psycho psychology, I mean, uh, psychologically. Uh, the psychology the, of it. Of, of, of the person, yeah. But yeah. there's there some few people that went through the teaching in the center, and I know personally some people that went through this experience, and they today they, they themselves said that they understand. They understand. And the beauty of earth is if you can teach yourself, well, in our lives, disaster is what we call disaster. It's going to strike all of us. You're going to get deaths in the family. Things are going to happen to all of us. If you can be prepared before these things happen to you, then so much the better. You can go through life in a better form. You can accept it easier. If you're not prepared for it, then it can be disastrous. It can be real. It can be devastating. Mm. But if you know that you've got an inner self, then you have something that will take you through it in a far calmer, balanced way. Okay. Things are going to happen, no matter what. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. We're, we're running towards the end of our programme, and I think uh, uh, the way I want to, to, to wrap it up is to maybe go round and turn and just ask and, and to, 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 to explain in 25 words or less <laughs> um, what is the, the, the greatest thing that the, that the Kabbalah has done for you, and it has to be 25 words or less, or maybe 30 <laughs> or 40 words. <laughs> no, I'll give you... 50 words, no more than 50 <laughs> words. 50 <laughs> words, <laughs> absolute <laughs> maximum. <laughs> okay, so 50 words, and I'll start with you, Stanley. It's very simple. It's uh, strength of my belief in the Creator. That's good, okay. And maybe we can all learn from, from Stanley's um, beautiful mm. brevity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for me, I believe that the Kabbalah uh, gives me uh, the tools to understand a lot of things and to change things in my personal life and to appreciate the merit that I have to be involved with the, the learning, the teaching, and the, the, this uh, all uh, uh, teaching that to do with Kabbalah, with the connection with the upper part of herself and the realization of herself. Okay, right. It's allowed me to become a little bit more balanced in my 
daily life and to realise that every day is a learning day. We never stop learning until the day we die. And that when we do die, you have to embrace it with joy and happiness and not fear it at all. And continue, while we are alive, to enjoy every second, because it is precious. Ariel, simple uh, like Stanley, it's really helped me to reconnect to, to that divinity, to that creator. Ruth. It's given me faith and hope and belief and also it's helped me to be a better person and to believe that we're not all in isolation that we're all connected and if I do something good and positive it will have an effect on not just myself it have an effect on the whole world. Kabbalah kept me Jewish. Kabbalah taught me that we are nothing in the scheme of the universe and we are everything in the scheme of the universe.